<laughs> they used frying pans, but I, to be honest, I don't feel like advising because, yeah, you, you know, the problem you're going to have yeah. when you're doing that, the coffee is going to uh, retain more of the smoke into the coffee beans, mm. and it's going to have more of uneven roast. Other coffee are going to be ready, and the other coffees will also be a different, you know. Mm. So it's not advisable to do it that way because the only way we have to do it is doing it the right way. Mm. Yeah, you can grab your coffee when it's roasted according to your, you know, um, preference. Preference. Mm. If you want a medium, you want it, you grab a pack. And yeah. there's no substitution. You can do it only to buy. Um, a small sample roasters there there because you can kind of regulate the temperatures on how you are roasting it yeah. actually that can also work for like a home based stuff to make sure that you have your cup at the end of the day yeah. they are there I'm sure in in, in the in, in supermarkets, supermarkets. Mm. and to me I don't know but you can have that you put in some little bit something like 200 or 150 grams of coffee yeah yeah you fire it up you know you can plug it on and then mm. it does the roasting it does the roasting so oh. you can enjoy your coffee that way you yeah. have your small grinder also because it's important you yeah. cannot drink your coffee without grinding mm. yeah the process ends up with grinding and then you're having your your cup of coffee your cup of coffee brew okay so that, that that's on the home side yes. uh, i believe that you work for a company that does this on yes. a commercial scale yes. uh how different are those uh, the ones that they use commercially from the local ones and are there any particular types that if i wanted to start a coffee roasting uh company that i should look out for yeah actually um with coffee uh, when you when you're talking about roasters and how they are best in terms of their functions. Um, we have uh, um, a hot air roaster, which is more of a convection, mm. you know, and then we have the other one with, which has a direct heat, you know, I can just be so uh, direct. So if you're having a direct heat roaster, mm. so that means um, this is the effect that people don't know. Mm. If you're roasting coffee using one which is high, direct heat, so the impact to the coffee beans is direct. Yeah. Because the drum keeps on turning, you're having your coffee inside the drum and it's heated under which is more direct to the drum. Mm. So the drum is turning and the heat impacts direct to the coffee beans so at the end of the day you find like still um the flavors mm. the flavors you will have some variations in terms of flavors you mm. might not develop as as um, a whole yeah. than It's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that. So I will <laughs> I will change the script this time round. Um, yeah, yeah. uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question I think to answer. I am a Tipilo Lao man from a route north yeah. in a place called Ogur, and where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agweng. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically Ugandan, yeah. only Ugandan, yeah. uh, from Lira. I uh, pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest lago yeah, yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah. you're down the south so, after Karuma, oh, I think I, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. Well, now that you know, Tony Otoa is Ugandan, and of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and he would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. So I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, uh, the love for debates and, 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 and really in a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Well, leadership is number one, walking the talk. I think there are too many people who talk the talk, but not enough people walk the talk. So you have to be a leader. Leadership has to be seen. It has to be felt. It's something you have to learn from. Leadership is being responsible for you know, your actions, your decisions, being able to back them up, being able to, to see other people's strengths, to bring out the best in your team, your family, your friends. That's leadership. You have to be able to identify people's unique talents, unique gifts, and bring out the best in them. To me, that's what I think of leadership. You have to know each equipment. Wow. You have to know the brew ratio. Actually, the brew ratio is the, very important. the most important yeah. brew ratio now most people don't, may not understand. Mm. It is the ratio of water. the coffee powder to water, to water. And, and the yield. Mm. Water in this article mean, will be bring us into the yield. Mm. If I put 10 grams of coffee into my water filter, how much, how much of it am I? Exactly. Yeah, so it. if you don't master the brew ratio, yeah. oh, <laughs> <laughs> everything is going to turn out a mess. Yeah. You understand? Even if you know that knowledge and you don't master the brew ratio. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Atengi Manuel. Wherever you're watching from around the world, it could be morning, afternoon, it could be evening. Whatever time it is, I know the saying always goes like it's always tea time. But here at House of Talent, on this day, we say anytime is coffee time. My name is Emmanuel, like I said, and the Coffee Messiah is not here with us today. He had to go, I think, to convert some people and maybe bring them into the studio next time we're here. But nonetheless, in the studio today, we have someone who is very experienced when it comes to the business of coffee, when it comes to everything that entails coffee. Mr. Abdul, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it, it's a privilege for us to have you here. I know that you bring a lot of experience when it comes to the coffee industry and the coffee business. And um, just to start off, uh, we want to say thank you for coming to House of Talent. Uh, it's a privilege for us to have you here and uh, we just want to get straight into your journey as a person you know before you got into the whole coffee business i know that 
you know n none of us grows up thinking okay you know i want to enter coffee one day yeah so just take us through your life you know where did you study where did you grow up what kind of influences did you have in your life and what led you to this place here today okay thank you so much um i'm so thankful like you've introduced me and my name is of yusuf abdul um actually uh, my way back, uh, I was born in Entebbe, yeah. that's my place of birth and uh, actually it's not where I uh, enjoyed my youthful age. Um, I grew up in Kabale, mm. Kabale district and uh, I salute everyone in Kabale. <laughs> I know they're also watching right now oh. and uh, um, I studied um, in Entebbe that is uh, my uh, my uh, from my primary my secondary level and then i had to go to kavai yeah that's where i had to complete my uh, uh, my study in institution however um to do with the coffee business it's um, actually so I would say amazing mm. to me because I had no idea because where I grew up there was nothing uh, like coffee and uh, actually um, I was being inspired by actually he's a, he's a white guy actually mm. I will tell you that he's, yeah. he was by name of uh, Mr. John Quinton mm. he's a British um, the citizen and I came to meet him in uh, Kampala sometimes back in 2000 uh, it was 2005 yeah so we chatted and I think as uh, I would say grown-ups and or people who have kind of uh, moved places he picked interest in me so in Kabale, uh, he so moved there and uh, he had a charity organization that he was running. It was actually called Africa Equipment for Schools. Mm. So actually I have a long story, yeah. but I think uh, we can catch up with it. So it was called Africa Equipment for Schools and uh, he took me on as a uh, I was a, a project assistant manager like um, it was they were building schools and also looking at uh, um, ensuring um, kids could stay at school as a mission mm. and kind of looking forward in why there is a kind of uh, big dropout rate at schools so we are kind of looking at that point to ensure that we can have kids at school. That's by that time. But with him, he came in and uh, I did not know that he also had a background, which was coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one day he called me. No, we were driving actually. We were driving from uh, Kampala to Kavale and then we were jazzing about and he's like you know uh, do you know that in um no he asked me um what are you going to do to be rich <laughs> <laughs> he asked me that yeah. what would you do to be rich uh. <laughs> i know he was expecting me to tell him uh. that i would work for you <laughs> and <laughs> become rich so yeah, actually, I did not say that. So I said, yeah, I have to be patient. Mm. That's what I told him. I have to be patient. I know there is some big catch for, uh, uh, ahead of me. He said, no. You know what? Uganda, you have got coffee. Yeah. And coffee is uh, very close to oil in terms of commodity. Mm. He said, oil sells more, yeah? 
but coffee is next. Mm. Uganda, you have the best coffee. One of the best coffee in all over the world. Yeah. This is someone from Europe. He's been here for some time and they do research. By the time he mentioned that, he, he had already made his research on the Ugandan coffee. Yeah. So here he carried on, he told me, we need to find coffee somewhere. I need to get sample of coffee somewhere. If yeah. possible, I can try it out. Hmm. And I asked him why, how, sorry, he said, I will show you. So we reached Kavale, like over the weekend, he called me to the office, because yeah. he was my superior, as my boss. He gave me a task. Mm. He told me, you know what? You're going to visit these places and I would want you to um, get these information from the places you're heading yeah. and make sure you come back with the samples of coffee. So he made you kind of <laughs> like a research assistant. In and uh, <laughs> I had no any idea, but uh, I was good in, uh, you know, I was traveling to Chigali, yeah. and uh, actually I didn't know how to speak that language. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't speak uh, the, <laughs> those uh, <laughs> brothers of our language. And, but I had good Swahili, and yeah. in those offices, mm. they had French, uh, Swahili, and uh, a bit of English. They um, are Rwanda, yes. Rwanda. Yeah. more, I mean, frequently mm. spoken, yeah. are those three. So, yeah, I went in those offices, I went to the Rwanda Coffee mm. <coughs> Authority, I moved on, I moved on to all those places in, uh, uh, in, in Rwanda because uh, I even didn't know the places, but I, I, had, uh, I had directions on how to reach there and I could easily use motorbikes and yeah. they, they could hear the Swahili, I was like, no, I'm <laughs> going to do it. Yeah. So I continued. Yeah, I came with a lot of samples and dropped to him. I had specifications, but I did not know how to differentiate or to kind of explain what exactly I came mm -hmm. with. But according to why, what I requested from them, yeah. they gave me some samples. So I came back, oh, he was so thankful. And yeah, we spent the whole time there talking about other things, but I'm sure for him, he knew that the goal is, mm. is hitting the target. So um, the next day I had to travel to Chisoro. Yeah. <laughs> the next day. So I left along what I was supposed to do, but some people, we, we were many, not alone, like me alone, but yeah. uh, I think he wanted to fulfill the, the the story that we had when we were driving about being rich that's it <laughs> <laughs> that's what i said so i went to chisoro yeah. also the same thing moved to several places and from there i could inquire also for some other places because yeah. i did not know all the whole places but i would inquire where else can i find something as good as you having here or yeah. anything close mm. so they could refer you yeah so there I went, I also came back. Actually from Kisora I got a lot of coffee. I don't know, maybe they <laughs> give coffee for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I came, I came with uh, almost 20 kgs oh. you know, from there. I didn't pay for it because yeah. they were like, no, you take it. Because I explained to them where I'm coming from and I'm looking forward to try their coffee and um, see if it, the consistency is right. Hmm. Maybe we would be communicating to them on the way forward. Yeah. They were so kind of uh, humbled. And since I came maybe to the, um, the factory where they do the processing, they had to give me yeah. enough. So mm -hmm. there I left and then I also brought that. So the other week I had to go and do my uh, task as usual. Then I came back uh, on Monday, so he told me to stay over. 
he had roasted. I didn't know in his suitcase mm. as he was coming to Uganda. <laughs> that is some years, like five years ago, he yeah. came with a, a sample roaster oh. in his bag. Yeah. So there he, he had roasted some coffee. He told me that five years ago, I came with my... <laughs> Imagine, you know, this advanced world, people tend to prepare themselves yeah, for in the in next advance. in advance mm. yeah so yeah he had roasted coffee yeah. during the weekend so when i came over i said whoa stay over something he prepared the coffee and he tried it how is it yeah <laughs> he was my boss i had to <laughs> say it's good <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, i had to say the coffee tastes good but you know what I wasn't used. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's good. That's good. He had some biscuits there, and yeah. So it became a kind of uh, a no because we had the 20 cages from some cages I got from Rwanda. Now yeah. he's roasting and drink his coffee over there yeah. now and then. So we're working, but now he's drawing more of the plans. There he started. It's like, you know what? We need to look for a place and have a coffee shop around. Mm. <laughs> Very fast. Yeah. How is it going to work? I have an idea. That's how he was like. So we, he would be the main man and I'm always following. Mm. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. So um, I started looking for places around the town and uh, yeah, I got some expensive places and all that. So it's so he ordered for, um, it was uh, an espresso machine. Mm. He ordered for one espresso machine. Yeah, it was old actually. Mm. I was say it was that <laughs> <beautiful> <laughs> machine. <laughs> it was old. Yeah, but maybe he wanted some kind of vintage stuff. You know, sometimes they want to have that crafty things, yeah? yeah. It looks old, but it's doing perfect stuff, you yeah. know? Because it was linked to having a grinder on the side. It could, you know, mm. self-made, something like that. So, yeah, it took us about two months moving up and down. Yeah. Then we got a space at a, a Cash and Curry supermarket. Mm. Those who are in Kavali, I'm sure they would be remembering some there was a, a, bit of <laughs> a coffee shop and a cash and curry supermarket there yeah. and uh, yeah we did some arrangement we arranged the place and then we got girls in to do some training as we are organizing the place you know do the roofing what yeah. doing mm. more furnitures purchasing things from Kampala so they were also doing training using that machine over and uh, yeah I would also mm. <laughs> be part of that yeah so it's it's, it's interesting yeah. that so you know interesting. You, you went up to that um yeah. we're going to take a short break uh, yes. this is a very interesting story and yes. uh, after the break we'll get back uh, yeah. right into it uh this is uh the coffee break on house of talent my name is Ivanel. today we're hosting abdul yusuf who's giving us you know a hint on how he ended up in the coffee business telling us that his first experience actually with coffee <laughs> wasn't that good and we'll be talking about this and more as we get back into it uh, let's take a break uh, go grab a cup of coffee and we'll be right back this is house of talent television
people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They have moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s. 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes. Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Emmanuel. This is the show where we get to talk about everything that is involved in coffee. We get to talk about brewing. We get to talk about uh, issues like from tree to cup. For those of you who understand that, and for those of you who don't understand, well, this is the right show for you. Before we went for a break, uh, we're talking to Mr. Abdul about his story, about you know where he started from and where he ended up in the coffee business. And he gave us his experience and said that his first experience with coffee actually wasn't good. He took it and, you know, said it was good so that he could impress his boss. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's something that really, it's a road that led him to this place. And I don't think it's something that you regret. Uh, it's something that has really built you into the man that you are in the coffee business. And uh, wherever your boss is, we want to say thank you to him mm -hmm. because he has given the country a very good resource. Um, talking about your story, uh, I realized that uh, you got into roasting before you actually became a barrister that you are now. So we just want to dive uh, into the coffee roasting process because that is our main topic for today. We'll start off with what is coffee roasting? For those, of, for those who are watching, they might not even know that coffee is roasted in the first place. Okay, so what is coffee roasting? Yeah, actually, thank you so much. Um, if I can talk about coffee roasting, Coffee roasting. This is uh, this is a process whereby your green coffee beans, yeah, are being uh, technically um, using fire. I would say mm. are being technically by use of fire, mm. being um, put into uh, I would say a way that uh, you want it. Uh, you're turning it from the green, yeah, and you're getting it to the level you're looking at, let me say you're doing, uh, let me say medium roast, yeah? Like to the level we have to on the, the screen there. All right, yeah, yeah we that can looks see. red on yeah. the screen. So that is almost medium to dark roast. So yeah. that one, it's actually a reaction that took place to enable that coffee beans turn to that color yeah. by use of fire and the chemical reaction that took place during the fire and the coffee beans so the coffee turned into that color and it's softened so it can be easily grinded oh. and you can brew your coffee after that coffee is being roasted oh, that's interesting so yes. where does it start because i know that the coffee process itself actually starts from when you put a seed into the ground mm -hmm. like for uh, for those who grow coffee yeah. okay then it comes into the hands of whoever is going to do the roasting. So yes. where do we start the process from and where does it end up into a cup? Yeah, actually with coffee processing, um, ideally, I prefer to give uh, a kind of uh, um, a very clear understanding that should, people should mind that before you start roasting your coffee, you should understand the type of coffee you need to roast. You know, that's the first thing. If you're looking at the type of coffee, then there follows the quality of the coffee. Yeah. Some people would just roast it. I don't know how they do it, but the right way or the right procedure could be you should first make analysis of your coffee. 
Mm. That's to do with the defects that the coffee should be having, mm. you know, right from the garden, the coffee would be processed, you know, mm. as it's processed, that is removing the outermost skins when it's already dry, actually, yeah. removing the outermost skin, you know, the parchment, and now the coffee is the green coffee mm. we are having now. So. Um, by the time you're having your green coffee, you need also to take a very clear note that if you're having it in quantity, it's not mixed up and you're having some defects into the coffee. Yeah. So in that, in that way, you should take note. You either have your moisturized right for the coffee, hmm. that it is dried. The coffee does is free from defects, yeah. you know, and the coffee, maybe even the smelling could smell nice, then the physical appearance, the coffee looks more greener. Okay. Because if it gives you a pale kind of looking, then there is something wrong with the coffee. Maybe it had a poor storage. Mm. Then the result in your cup will be disappointing. Will be different, yeah? Yes. Okay, so from what you're saying is that um, I need to first see what kind of coffee I have. I yeah. believe that in different parts of the world, uh, there are different types of coffee and uh, there are different uh, effects that uh, come onto this coffee. For example, the place where you grew it from, the kind of soil you used, you know. And um, by the time it comes to the cup, I think it, it, it still contains some of those elements, okay? So we have collected the coffee from, let's say, the farmers. We have uh, sorted the debris from it and now we have it in our hands, okay? what type of equipment do we need to use to roast this coffee? I believe that there are commercial equipments, then there are some that we can actually use locally at home. I believe uh, before all these equipments came, we <laughs> I remember that we were talking before the show, there was this Kawa coffee we had back in the day. I believe that uh, some of those uh, equipments were used locally. So what are some of these local equipments that we can use at home and also those that are used maybe in uh, bigger companies? Yeah, actually, if we are looking at coffee, as a commodity mm. um, or for value addition, you need to follow certain standard yeah. which is required for you to ensure that you reach into the market and your coffee is matching with the standard which is, you know, uh, moving in the market. Yeah. So if you're kind of hitting back, let me say, those people in the village, they feel like they want to roast their coffee and uh, they want to enjoy it. Yeah. This is different from the commercial, you know, um, a bit of it because you want to add value to it. So that means you need to take your research on what is required and you do, them, yeah. you know, on the market such that you maintain the quality, the coffee should be having flavors and at the end of the day, mm you're amazing people with what you've been cooking the other side yeah so yeah people use frying pans you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> they use frying pans but i to be honest i don't feel like advising because <laughs> yeah you, you know the problem you're going to have yeah. when you're doing that the coffee is going to uh, retain more of the smoke into the coffee beans mm. And it's going to have more of uneven roast. Other coffee are going to be ready and the other coffees will also be a different, you know. Mm. So it's not advisable to do it that way because the only way we have to do it is doing it the right way. Mm. Yeah, you can grab your coffee when it's roasted according to your, you know, uh, preference. preference. Mm. If you want a medium, you want it you grab a pack and yeah. there's no substitution you can do it only to buy um, a small sample roasters there there because you can kind of regulate the temperatures on how you are roasting it yeah. actually that can also work for like a home based stuff to make sure that you have your cup at the end of the day yeah. they are there i'm sure in in, in the in, in supermarkets, supermarkets. You can get mm. it in i don't know but you can have that. You put in some little bit, something like 200 or 150 grams of coffee. Yeah. Yeah, you fire it up, you know, you can plug it on and then mm. 
It does the roasting. It does the roasting. So oh. you can enjoy your coffee that way. You yeah. have your small grinder also because it's important. You yeah. cannot drink your coffee without grinding. Mm. Yeah, the process ends up with grinding and then you're having your, your cup of coffee. Your cup of coffee brewed. Okay, so that, that, that's on the home side. Yes. Uh, I believe that you work for a company that does this on yes. a commercial scale. Yes. Uh, how different? Are those uh, the ones that they use commercially from the local ones and are there any particular types that if I wanted to start a coffee roasting uh, company that I should look out for? Yeah, actually um, with coffee, uh, when, you're, when you're talking about roasters and how they are best in terms of their functions, um, we have uh, um, a hot air roaster which is more of a convection mm. you know and then we have the other one with which has a direct heat you know i can just be so uh, direct so if you're having a direct heat roaster mm. so that means um this is the effect that people don't know mm. if you're roasting coffee using one which is having a direct heat so the impact to the coffee beans is direct yeah because the drum keeps on turning, you're having your coffee inside the drum and it's heated under which is more direct to the drum. Mm. So the drum is turning and the heat impacts direct to the coffee beans. So at the end of the day, you find like still um, the flavors, mm. the flavors you will have some variations in terms of flavors. You mm. might not develop as as um, a whole yeah. than the other convection roaster. Yeah. You know, and another effect when you you you're doing that, you can hardly make a high roast. You yeah. know, you can hardly make a high roast to the level that you're looking for. You know, you can do all that, but your determination of the cup will vary okay you might not get it perfect mm. that is if you're doing a direct heat so if you're doing a convection roaster yeah um convection roaster is more kind of uh, interesting because it does a soft roasting whereby you're having a chamber which is having a cyclone on the other side so it transfers the heat yeah. to the drum inside and the paddles inside carries on dropping the coffee and the coffee is just dancing into the hot air yeah. you know something like that and the only thing you have to do is to regulate your burner ratio to ensure that the coffee is um, developing according to uh, your expectation so at the end of the day the bean would be more even it would be soft roasted there's no hard roasting i think mm. you get what i'm trying to mean the difference yeah, between the I two. Get it. yeah so it's not hard roasted you know so by the time your coffee is out it's more even immediately you get the aroma out and yeah. you feel like wow you know yeah that that's that's the difference with uh having different direct and hot air, and hot, hot yeah. air you know mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you say that you know the coffee dances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it, does. It, it it gives it a very good perspective. Yeah. Um uh we're going to get more about into the flavors that I believe that because when you roast you have a light roast, you yeah. have a, a medium, yeah. then you have the dark roast. Yeah. And these basically give you very different flavors, yes. okay? But we're first going to go into a break, then yes. we'll come back and talk about these flavors because I know the people out there actually want to know what kind of flavors do I get when I roast the coffee. Uh we'll be back uh, we'll be right back after this break, but we'll not only be talking about the flavors, but we're also going to do something special. We're going to brew some coffee like it's the tradition here and always I can't really wait to test the different kind of coffee that uh, the different baristas make here. This is House of Talent Television. The show is The Coffee Break. Stay right there. We will be right back after this.
people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed. Technology has come in. They've moved on. Yes. We're the ones sitting back and wondering, what is my child on to? TikTok has surpassed what's yap. Mm -hmm. The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, yeah. and then in the 90s, 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Yeah, remember Prince? Yes. Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Tengi Manuel, and remember, you can always catch us on our social media handles at House of Talent Television Uganda. That's on YouTube, on our Facebook, and on Twitter. And you can also catch us on House of Talent Television UG. Dot com and that is our website you can catch not only this show but also other shows that uh, will be happening um before we went into a break we we're talking about coffee roasting with abdul and uh, we we're getting into basically to talking about the different kinds of flavors that we get after roasting coffee but as we do that like i told you we're going to have something special as we talk about the different flavors that we have we're going to be brewing a cup of coffee so abdul what are we going to be brewing today I see all these you know yeah actually we've have equipment. we've got our hurry of v60 yeah and i'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it so we would make um we would brew our coffee it would be about uh, four cups of coffee yeah so i think we are four yeah so Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. So yeah. where do we start? Uh, for those of you who are following at home, uh, just get your stuff ready and let's get into brewing this beautiful cup of coffee. All right. Abdul. So actually, this um, device. Okay. Yeah. yeah so with this device this is a hario v60 you always get this yeah okay and you can improvise to get a gel for yourself mm. so it's actually pretty so easy to have um, this uh, equipment yeah. used it's very easy so actually the the mechanism i think what's most important is for you to master how much something like what quantity do you need to brew for like each cup of coffee. Yeah. I think that is so important because someone out there might want to brew his one and only cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. And since we about, you know, want to share, you know, <laughs> we need to do more than <laughs> yeah, one. Than so um, with this standard um, measurement you require to use for a V60, you need to use about a, a ratio of about one to 15. So we are talking about um, one gram of coffee could be equivalent to like uh, um, one gram of coffee is equivalent to mm. one meal of, of water, of water. Yeah, yeah. so if you say one to fifteen we are talking about fifteen grams of coffee mm. into uh, uh, one cup so here we're going to have uh, about uh, four cups of coffee so okay. we're talking about having uh, 60 grams of, of, mm, coffee, of coffee which is enough for us so yeah. uh, we will do about 200 and this is about 250 mils of, of water of water so yeah. it would be uh, very easy for us to have our yield out mm. you know if we make four cups at a go yeah okay so here you go 
Maybe start by putting it here. Two. So I don't have my weighing scale, but we can. <laughs> we can we always measure it. just. <laughs> ah, yeah, we can. It's okay. We can yeah. always go with so, this. Yeah, the right measurements are that you can have your 15 grams of coffee. Yeah. In your cup, and then here you go. So very, as very simple. You have your coffee. Because I think we don't. Yeah. We need to mention that you need to have a filter. Yeah, you need to. Yes. 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 yes you're right. Actually. You might have someone. You know, just pour it. And you're right. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's always better to have a filter because it helps you to kind of uh, uh, um, infuse the coffee so the granules get stuck on top. Then yeah. you're having your brewed your coffee, coffee down. down there, so yes. you just very simple. This is our hot water. It's being brewed. Uh, yeah. It's been. Uh, uh, boiled. Boiled. So yeah. uh, you need it about uh, at a boiling point, but you give it some minutes to yeah. rest a bit because you can't drink it when it's too hot. Yeah. Yeah. So here you have to to pour it over. You can either use that kettle to pour over, or you use um, a pour over kettle. This looks like the ones that we used to use back in the day. <laughs> yeah. But I think I can use that. Yeah. If you don't mind, so gently. Gently, just do it gently. Oh, the coffee is so fresh. Yeah. yeah, I think this is one of the things, uh, first things that you teach at a coffee school that when you're pouring the water, it has to be in a circular motion. Yes, <laughs> you just course. don't pour, you know, as you please. It has to be in a circular kind of motion. Yeah, such that you can have an even yeah. um, flow, you know. Yeah, for those watching at home, I hope you can see how beautiful this looks. On your screens there we're brewing a beautiful cup of coffee and as it goes up you can give it some seconds to make yeah. sure that it, uh, it all goes down yeah. wow look at that so interesting yeah yeah so as we brew this uh, we'll talk about the different kind of flavors that we can get from a roast uh, what kind of flavors uh, basically do we get and is there a particular recipe that each person has to get a different flavor or you know it's kind of like a general type of flavor that we can all get yeah, actually, if I can take you back just briefly during the, the, the roasting process. Yeah. So as you're roasting, the rust, roaster itself, in most cases, we give it a time before you start roasting your coffee. Mm. So you give it some, you, you heat it up. We call mm. it heating up. So yeah. you heat it up to a temperature of about 230 to 235 degrees above. So to ensure that the coffee you're going to drop in, yeah, remember the coffee you're dropping in is green, yeah, and the coffee is um, exposed to the uh, atmospheric temperature. Yeah, it's exposed to the atmospheric temperature. temperature. Yeah. So when you drop the coffee in, it's going to drop the temperature that you had maintained before. Yeah. Okay. So that one is technically done as a roaster. I have to be there standing and monitoring mm. my temperature so i drop in my coffee in and then i have to maintain my burner ratio mm. so i fire it up to ensure that we are maintaining the temperature in the drum and not leaving it relaxed yeah so we have three stages of roasting mm. we are looking at the drying stage whereby the um, the heat inside the roaster yeah. is nailing down the moisture which is present in a coffee bean before it's being roasted. Yeah. Then at that stage, we go into a developing stage. So the coffee starts developing. This is where you talk about the flavors, mm. you know. So this, this stage where the caramelization takes place, yeah. which is from about, if you drop in at around um, 260 degrees, 235 degrees, it drops down, to the, the, the roaster drops down its temperature yeah. to about um, 70 degrees. That is way down, you know. And I think that's where it becomes exothermic. Yes. Oh. Depending on how much quantity of coffee you are dropping in, yeah. it might not drop in if you're putting in a little, depending. Yeah. It depends, but mm. I would say at a capacity of a roaster, if you put the right amount, it will drop down. So when it drops down, literally, the the the, the, the temperature will move for about four minutes, 
yeah, to about 160 degrees, yeah. then we reach to a stage of uh, developing. So, developing stage, coffee start changing colors, yeah, caramelization takes place, yeah. and then sugars are present into the coffee. Mm. So it develops, it starts developing flavors, you know, complexity, yeah. and then you're looking at monitoring your type of roast you're looking at. Mm. So if you're if you are looking at doing a medium roast, then if you're doing a temperature, you would look at around 210 to about 200 and uh, not more than 220, depending on how you want a medium roast done. Yeah. It can be a high, medium, something like that, mm. slightly. And then if you are developing it further, yeah, mm. you are roasting, you know, the last stage which yeah. is the roasting stage so the coffee start changing colors yeah. so now it does a medium dark roast mm. then you're doing a dark, dark roast. roast so yeah. you're looking at more temperatures like 232 you're doing a medium to dark roast yeah. and then we're talking about salacious you mm. know um you go to 200 and uh, about 240 doing a real dark roast with more oily on the body and uh, yeah so interesting you know yeah. so now if as we are brewing i think our coffee is ready yeah coffee is ready so as we do our brewing we can have that on top here yeah if you don't mind and we can have a cup of coffee yeah we can just move this here served This is the part we always actually wait for <laughs> really? to test the different kinds of coffee. Yeah. Um, Very so simple, yeah. you know, and anyone can do that at home and you enjoy your coffee as you yeah, know, that's you're doing some stuff. Actually, it looks so simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if I can take you, uh, you said uh, you have a coffee school. Yes. And um, I think it's very important for us in Uganda to actually come up with these schools, you know, yeah. given the times that we're actually in, you know, with yes. the whole lockdown and yes. COVID. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some students are really not in school right now. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of other other things that we can learn outside of school for example you know involving ourselves in the coffee business so just run us through your school okay uh, what kind of activities you guys do what kind of uh, courses that you offer and uh, how can someone you know approach you and you uh, get into uh, your school yeah actually thank you so much for yeah that opportunity yeah and looking forward to kind of support our entire uh, country uh, amidst these uh, um, very uh, difficult times that yeah. we are going through. So our school, um, this is the school is called Gulf and Blends. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we, we got the concept kind of, uh, you know, people like blended coffee. Baristas talk about blendings, you yeah. know, so we came with that idea to say that's Gulf and Blends. And yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a history actually behind that. So, yeah. yeah, our location, we are located at Uvaga. Yeah, as you reach um, Salt FM or mm. Salt Media, yeah. from there it's just like five minutes. Yeah. You're reaching at Gulf and Blends okay. and Coffee. So, from there, we train baristas. Mm. Yeah, we train baristas. And if you're a barista out there, you feel like you want to kind of handle these skills and then you. You need to build something for you, you know, for your career, which is more tangible. You yeah. can come and have this skill at Gulf and Blends. You can train as a barista, we can train you. So we train them for a period of one month. Mm. Yeah, we train them a, peri a period of one month. You can come and do an advanced uh, skills mm. for your training course. So advanced skill is um, when you train you train commercial basis which is the espresso coffee machine where you're going to do all the coffees yeah. you know from cappuccino latte macchiato mochas you do all that kind of uh, coffee using that machine and mastering them because yeah. in most cases we've got standard way of serving hmm. and standard way of preparing these coffees yeah. so as um, you're training you will learn that 
Apart from learning that, if you're doing advance, you're going to also learn the specialty coffee uh, brewing. Yeah. So, specialty coffee starts with the green coffee because specialty, this is the, like the standard way of preparation. It can either be the green beans, it's being carefully, you know, taken care of yeah. to meeting certain standard. Yeah. So now, we're going to we're going to also have a specialty preparation yeah. of coffee. I'm talking about a brewing in yeah. the other hand, where we would be having different tools that we are using there, and they are actually traditionally known yeah. for their uh, uh, different tests and mm. different grinds of coffee required for you to brew them. Yeah. The other one is commercial because you only use one grind of coffee which is espresso grind to kind of make all these other coffees. Yeah. Now you will need to adjust your grinder, have it more coarser to kind of do a French press, do a V60, do a Chemex, yeah. you know, and all those other coffees, even a drip coffee which you're having at home yeah. you need a specific grind to make sure that you're not overflowing yeah. the coffee or messing up all over the table yeah. yes so that is for the advanced yeah. so if you're doing a basics training mm -hmm. you will only learn the commercial you know some people want that because they have been running over and they've mm -hmm. been like uh, involved in the yeah, the business. Yeah, yeah, they were already waiters or waitresses. Mm. Now they just want to catch up. Yeah. yeah. So that way also you just come and do basics oh. because you have some idea. Okay. So we move together to ensure that we have our goals met. Yeah. Okay. In um, our career. So is there a way that uh, these different people can contact you? Are you on social media? Are you already told us you're located in Rubaga next yes. to Salt uh, Media? So are you on social media and what are the handles that people can find you yeah with. actually you can reach us um you can reach us on our handles like i can give you your con my contacts we yeah. are on whatsapp we are on facebook yeah um, you can you can reach us uh on facebook it's gulf and blends you just go gulf and blends you find us on facebook and uh, our contact if you can reach us direct as well we can be so uh helpful to you and welcome you at uh, Gulf and Blends, and literally, we call ourselves the coffee culture. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so I can give you the number yeah. 0701 104027. Okay. I can repeat the number, it's 0701 and that's a WhatsApp and a calling number? Yeah, that's a calling number, and it's the WhatsApp number. You can reach us and you can also hit on the Facebook and yeah. then you find us, uh, yeah, you comment or you tell us whatever you feel like yeah. discussing with Gulf and Vince. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes. Talking about that as we actually have our cup of coffee before it gets so cold. Uh, we're talking before the show began and uh, you had something interesting that you wanted to tell people out there. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to, you know, start this barista ah. journey of theirs. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want you to yeah. look into that camera yeah. and just tell that wow. person, I know there is someone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like he said, I know there is someone. I want to thank uh, um, the team of, uh, House, of Talent. House of Talent for hosting me. And I'm sure he's hosted the whole academy in here, though <laughs> others are invisible. But <laughs> I'm sure all of you are in here. So um, we are giving out uh, an opportunity for those who are interested, they're feeling so much enthusiastic into coffee and they want to train as baristas, we are giving a chance for five people out there if you want to train as a barista. We are giving a chance of a 50% um, discount. discount such that uh, you can come and train with us. You know, this is an opportunity, it's your opportunity. So um you will have to call um house of talent give them a call um the first five people i'm sure you will be <laughs> the lucky ones and they will contact us for the lucky ones and we will um welcome you um 
for the training. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, just to reiterate what he said, uh, we're giving an opportunity. I know that uh, there are those of you who watch this show and keep on wondering how can I become a barrister, how can I get involved in the coffee process, and Gulf and Blends is here to give you that opportunity. So, for the first, first five people to contact House of Talent, you can DM us on our social media handles. For the first five people, you're going to get a 50% discount from Gulf and Blends so that you can start your barrister journey. We have told you don't be like in Kampala where we say we didn't know, but we've let you guys know. So get involved in the coffee business. I believe that it's something that is going to be, you know, very good for not only your future, but, you know, for the future of those around you. And it will give you basically skills, added, added on skills. They call it add on skills, you yes. know, in other areas. Um, yeah. As we draw close to the end of the show, I just want to thank you, Abdul, for, you know, coming here and, you know, just giving us your experience yes. traveling around yeah. East Africa, being in Kisoro, yeah. your first experience with coffee and, uh, you know, telling us about the roasting process, all the equipment and all the flavors that are involved. I believe that I, I personally have learned a lot from uh, this time and I believe that everyone out there has